everybody, Tactic Angel, back on the PlayStation 5. Today, to talk about some news that just came out for World of Warships Legends. Hopefully, this is a short breakdown of the updates coming due to the addition of Tier 8 ships. If you are completely unfamiliar with the addition of Tier 8 ships, it will be a tier wedged between Tier 7 and Legendary. There you go. But, I do want to get through this pretty quickly, so let's just jump into it. Since Tier 7 will be effectively no longer part of the end game for Legends, we'll see some adjustments in service cost for Tier 6 and 7 ships. Below you can see a chart of the exact amounts, but we're looking at a reduction in Tier 6 and 7 Tech Tree service costs by 10%, a reduction in Tier 7 Premium service costs of 30%, and the increase in credit earnings from 15% to 55% for premium ships at Tier 7. This will more or less make Tier 7 the new Tier 6, not only in terms of how far away it is from the eventual legendary ships, but also in terms of probably being the best tier to print credits. We also know for sure what the first Tier 8 ships will be, rather than having to squint, slow down, pause, and then guess at what in the world we're looking at. For the USN, we have the main, which is mostly a work of fiction sitting between the Iowa and Montana, which we can see in the thumbnail of this video with five forward-facing guns and another five to the rear. Buffalo will be the tier eight ship after Baltimore, and Sumner will slide in between Fletcher and Gearing, which is both historically accurate and an interesting change from PC. Japan enters battle with Izuma, following Amagi, which is something like a 16-inch Japanese version of Nelson. Ibuki follows Mogami, and on PC it's very much just an improved Mogami. And the Yugamo, following Kagero. Germany will have the fairly predictable Friedrich de Grosse being either the Big Bismarck or Mini Kurfürst. Rune after Hipper, which is disappointingly a Hipper if built like a Nuremberg on PC. And Z46 after Z23, which should nicely differentiate itself simply by having a different number than the Z23, Z36, Z39, and Z1, which we also know as the Liebrick Mass. And finally, we have the Soviet Union with the Soviet Union, which at least gets points for trying, as it is a ship that the Russians at least managed to build part of. It follows Vladivostok, Dmitry Donskoy follows the Chapayev, and Delny follows the Tashkent, which is sort of interesting since that is a tier 10 ship on PC. What follows from here is some Q&A stuff displayed as presented to me. In order to purchase a tier 8 ship, you'll need a total of 300,000 XP and 25 million credits. The credit part is easy enough to understand, but with equipment, understand that it'll probably take you more money to fill out those four equipment slots than you will expect to be on a Tier 8 ship. Since Elite XP on Tier 7 ships will be transferred to Ship XP, and since the top module costs 100,000 from Tier 7 ships, I imagine this means that if you have 200,000 Elite XP on a ship, you'll have enough XP to unlock a Tier 8 ship. Service costs will be similar to the traditional Tier 7 costs, and it says premium Tier 8 ships will have similar earning potential as the Tier 7 ships used to have. It appears the plan is to allow Tier 7, 8, and Legendary to play together until there are enough Tier 8 ships to go back to plus one or minus one matchmaking. They list one update being the amount of time necessary to populate that tier, and my guess is that that means that we won't see something in the middle of this update, and it's very unlikely that it'll go more than two before we get back to plus one minus one. It's a guess, but that's an educated guess. There is also a question about Weimar, which seems to imply Weimar will move to tier seven in the next update. This isn't a mind-blowing bit of news since we've been expecting this for a few updates now. Unsurprisingly, particularly since we have already seen legendary tier campaigns and several tier 7 campaigns, expect to see some earnable tier 8 ships. I imagine we will see a tier 8 ship for every tier 7 ship out there currently, eventually, but keep in mind if they do put out an impressive 12 ships per update, which seems kind of like a lot and a pace that they probably won't keep, it would take them at least three updates to fill out the tree as it currently stands. 
That's all just speculation, but you can read into these words whatever you'd like. Like any other ship, expect that performance may affect how ship's stats are changed in the game now that different ships are facing different opponents. It is also possible that future early access lines will include access to Tier 7 ships, though from this response it's also possible that it won't. Next, we do seem to expect the return of certain popular ships. This response is 25 words longer than yes and no, or 27 words longer than maybe, but basically means the same thing. We will see legendary aircraft carriers. That response is not surprising at all. Uh, do we plan on seeing super ships or a full 10 tiers? It's always best not to interpret no as never in these things, but to me that means not anytime soon. And with that for a full 10 tiers, they'd have to effectively add tier zero. Uh, so I don't think that people actually want that. But that's it. That's the news for today. Not sure why I made this video, but I hope it wasn't too long. Hope it helped you out a little bit in terms of reading, though all the words are there if you'd like. I've also got a link down in the description if I've woken up already and filled that in. But as always, I hope to see you on the next one.